John. Uh, I wish to thank very much the organizing committee for an invitation to again be back at St. Gallen and address this conference. And I also wish to thank them for an extremely apt question that they asked me to address, because current SEER data suggests that the number of re-excisions are going up each year in people breast, having breast conserving surgery, uh, more often for close margins than for positive margins. No conflicts of interest to this. Uh, it's helpful, I think, to go back to 30,000 feet and remember the thesis of breast conserving surgery. That is that we learned that irradiation will control subclinical tumor. On the other hand, it will not control large areas of macroscopic tumor, which is somewhat epoxic, unless it's given at an extremely high dose, which all but destroys the breast, and so that's not ideal. But surgery can deal with that gross tumor focus in a cosmetically acceptable manner. So putting these two together made this possible, as you all know, in the randomized trials of the 80s. Well, when we consider margin width, another bit of history from the past that's important to remember is how far breast cancer can be found in the breast if you do a mastectomy. How, uh, Roland Holland in Nijmegen uh, in the 80s published his data uh, showing that if you take a 20 millimeter margin, uh, you will still have tumor left behind in almost half the patients. These were typically uh, T2 and some T3 tumors. VIA repeated that in 96 uh, with uh, slightly more modern techniques and with uh, T1 and 2 tumors and found that again, 20 millimeters on a side, almost half the patients had findable residual tumor in the breast. Well, the, the goal of all breast cancer treatment is to prevent recurrence. But the goal of breast conservation is to also end up with a normal looking breast. Increasing the volumes of excision have been shown repeatedly to correlate with poorer cosmetic outcomes and patient dissatisfaction because of this nasty fact that uh, the cube of the radius describes the volume. So if you have a 1.6 centimeter tumor, this is the most common uh, cancer center reported tumor for BCT in the last couple of years, 1.6 centimeters. That is about a, almost a six cc volume with a three millimeter margin, and it is four times that much, four volumes to go to a centimeter margin. If you have a typical palpable tumor at 2.4 centimeters, you again go up dramatically uh, if you take a one centimeter margin. So the bigger the margin, the greater the volume, the greater the concern about cosmesis. Now when we talk about margins, uh, one of the first major looks at this was by Eva Singletary, who reviewed 34 studies and demonstrated that However, the people in their study defined margins, positive versus negative. Some called less than one millimeter positive. Some called less than two millimeter positive. In every instance, there was about two to three, typically two and a half times the recurrence rate if you had a positive margin. On the other hand, it didn't make much difference at all what you defined if your margin was negative. Husami, in 2010, reviewed 21 studies not involved in Eva Singletary studies, and he found that same ratio, negative to positive margins, 2.4 times as likely to have a local failure if you had a positive margin. Why? Well, here are two positive margin excisions. This one may well leave no macroscopic tumor behind. This one may leave a significant amount of macroscopic tumor behind, and you just don't know. All you know is that on the specimen, the margin was positive. It doesn't tell you what's left in the breast. How positive a margin? Sounds like something Johnny Carson would have asked years ago. How positive is the margin? Jay Harris and his friends at Joint Center addressed this question years ago 
with negative margins, and they defined that as more than a millimeter, the local failure rate was 7%. On the other hand, if you had close margins, the local failure rate was 7%. If you had positive margins, though, it went to 18%. Extensively positive, where you were very concerned that you had gross tumor left behind, 27% local failure rate, even with good radiation therapy. Just focally positive, though, it was 14%. And if those patients received systemic therapy, as my prior speakers have addressed, you are down to 7% again. So what's a negative margin? For a while, many of the breast meetings and surgical meetings have had panels with some poor soul assigned <laughs> one millimeter to defend or two millimeters. Well, the problem with this is what are we talking about? Um, on the left is a specimen that some surgeon has removed. Any of the surgeons who are speaking today would have a perfectly spherical specimen, you understand, with no funny marks like that, with a nice even margin of normal tissue around the breast just to make sure we weren't exposing breast. But now, when that gets to pathology, it has been sitting in a bottle flattening. And if it's imaged by breast imaging, it's important that they have one of their very strong technicians mash it before it's imaged. And so you send off a three centimeter sphere and you get back a report that says the dimensions were one centimeter by 3.9 centimeters by 4.1 centimeter. Well, what does the margin mean? Not a lot. So what is a negative margin? I assign any six-year-old student to answer that and it is a margin that is not positive, and that is the correct answer. A margin can never say all clear because it doesn't tell you what's out in the breast. It only tells you what went to the pathologist. So this issue of close versus wider margins, the Joint Center Group in 2000, no difference. Singletary, no difference. Husami, no difference. Now DCIS is different. There have been some excellent studies suggesting that a millimeter was sufficient but Monica and some of her colleagues, I'm sorry, Professor Morrow and some of her colleagues uh, addressed this with 22 studies that they reviewed. And as you see, the break came uh, if you have more than two millimeters of margin outside DCIS excisions. But I'm really talking about invasive cancer today. So your goal as a surgeon is to avoid positive margins. You do, do that by relating the margin width to the size of the tumor bigger the tumor, you need a little bit more margin to try and be sure you aren't positive. But you also can give neoadjuvant chemo or hormonal therapy, hopefully, if you have any concern about the size of the tumor. This is a woman who, in her right breast, had a generous T2 tumor. But after neoadjuvant therapy, it was down to about a centimeter. And she could vacation even here in Europe on the beach. And no one would guess that she had breast cancer in the past. You can also uh, do careful margin evaluation in the operating room, and if anything looks close, take a little more margin. Or you can do a touch prep and frozen section on every patient and wait in the operating room while it's done. Now, that was done at Mayo Clinic. They did a whole series of frozen sections while they waited in the operating room. And they determined with a cost analysis that that only is cost effective if you have a greater than 36% go back to the operating room rate. You can do a shave biopsy of cavity margins where you do your lumpectomy and then suspect that it's going to end up squished. And so you take a little margin all the way around and label those for the pathologist. Uh, that was done in our institution and it led to fewer positive margins. It was done at Mass General and it led to no difference in margins. But interestingly, in the series done at Mass General, the group that they excised and then took shave margins all around, the total volume of specimen plus margins was significantly less volume than the group where they just did a lumpectomy. So it's not surprising they had that problem. Intraoperative ultrasound guidance uh, looks fairly exciting to me. This is the COBALT trial that's in Lancet Oncology just now. And you see that with palpation-guided surgery, 16% had a positive margin rate, and that was dropped to about 3% if you used ultrasound guidance. That's exciting, uh, awaits reproduction somewhere else. 
And there are now electromagnetic margin probes that are available. Uh, again, these are not to be used in the cavity, just on the specimen to get an early reading as to whether the margin is positive. Uh, this is a disposable probe. It cannot be used if you used any local anesthesia because then it can't take a reading. But if you didn't use local anesthesia, you can use this disposable probe. It's only $990 to get that disposable probe. If you have a positive margin, you need to re-excise it. There's a major and significant alteration in local failure risk because you don't know how much tumor you left behind. And that offsets the stress and cosmetic loss that goes with a re-excision. If you carefully oriented your specimen and color, six color inking, then you, if you have to go back, you only need to take the area that was positive. But distressingly, in some recent publications in the US, the actual re-excision rate of positive margins varied from 74 to 94%. Clearly, we need to do better there. Now, there are particular risk groups, and you've heard these addressed. Patients less than 50, even more patients less than 40, even more patients less than 35. Triple negative biology, basal profile, elegantly discussed already. Extensive DCIS, multifocal, multicentric. Didn't know I could read this fast, did you? Larger tumors. Those who have a spotty response to neoadjuvant therapy. What do I mean by particular risk? We're not talking about BRCA cases, that's a different talk. There are two risks that are particular. You are more likely as a surgeon to get positive margins on your excision just by the biology of these tumors. So you need to attempt a slightly larger margin, not to get a bigger margin of normal tissue, but to avoid getting a positive margin. But even if they're margin negative, they're more likely to suffer a local recurrence. Even if you do a mastectomy, they're more likely to get a local recurrence. Even if you do a mastectomy, give systemic therapy, and radiate them, they're more likely to get a local failure. So there's no evidence that wider, clear margins are superior. Clear margins are important, but as Dr. Morrow just showed so elegantly, biology is king. So diagnosed by a core biopsy, that relates to fewer positive margins. Integrate the tumor size, biology, patient's age, multifocality, all those things that we think about in planning it. And if the margins are positive, re excise because we are under-treating those patients. If the margins are negative, do not re-excise. For those who missed this talk, if they're close, no. If they're positive, yes. Am I positive? Yes. Thank you very much.